quantum industry at the moment is in this really interesting part of its journey where we're starting to go outside of the four walls of quantum. We'll see the big breakthroughs, we'll see you know drug discoveries, but I think actually just everyone's life just getting a little bit better because we've got extra processing power to do novel things in the back end, I think is gonna be the, the kind of stealthy breakthrough. We'll look back in 10 years time and go, oh wow, how did we ever live without this stuff? You know? I'm Simon Phillips, I'm the Chief Technology Officer at Oxford Quantum Circuits, OQC. And my responsibility really is taking OQC's high-level vision and mission of putting quantum in the hands of humanity and turning that into a technical strategy and then delivering against that technical strategy. In some ways it's the best job in the world. I get to point into the, the, the future and say, let's make this, and then have a lot of very talented people do the, the hard work underneath. But really what my role is, yeah, is distilling the vision and mission into a strategy to, to deliver. I used to work in the video games industry. I was a software developer in the 1990s, programming uh, assembly language and really learning how computers work from a hardware level. And over the years, I've been fortunate enough to, to run various businesses. And I always used to think we could change the world with video games. And then I met Alana and we got talking about quantum computers. And actually it dawned on me that by getting involved with quantum computers, we really can change the future and actually build something much more meaningful there's almost been a, like a, a, an opposite stigma with getting into quantum computing or quantum physics based things. That as soon as you put the word quantum on it, it actually turns a lot of people off, right? They think that I've got to be you know, the smartest PhD in the world to be able to get involved with it, and that's really not the case. So I think, you know, when we look at just quantum computing, which remember quantum computing is just a subset of the entire quantum market, probably only about 50% of it is quantum related. There's lots of things in there that aren't necessarily quantum. Um, related things, there's infrastructure projects, there's project management, there's strategy. So I think if you are into quantum physics, just reach out to companies, you know, there's lots of space for quantum physics graduates or quantum physics curious people to start getting involved with design and simulation, things like that. But if you're not from a quantum background, there's such a big scope nowadays for getting involved uh, with quantum computing companies. There's kind of a, an anecdotal fun story as to why we ended up working with data center providers, including Sixterra, and it actually started from Quantum Computer Lucy, which is our eight qubit quantum computer that's currently available on AWS. But that's based in our lab in Reading. Uh, and it's a very good lab, very secure lab, and has some good kind of infrastructure to it. I think it was two years ago, we had Storm Arwen, and Storm Arwen caused a power brownout which meant that something didn't restart on the system and the system warmed up. And with superconducting circuits, we have cryogenic temperatures and we need to maintain those temperatures. So we started looking at different ways we could build redundancy into that system. And because of that storm and because of the need for redundant power, we thought, actually, this has been solved before, right? So we started to call some data centers up and said, we want to bring a quantum computer to a data center because you've got uninterruptible power supplies and diesel generators. And we spoke to Six Terra and they said, well, come over for a tour. It became very clear that actually everything else in that data center is actually our end customers. And Six Terra just, just got it. We're in a world now where we're going to see some very significant breakthroughs in the next few years, I think, and there's nothing more exciting than being at the front of that and having a play in it and a responsibility for defining that future. And I think that's, you know, that's an amazing motivator and that's really what makes me keep pushing and, you know, keep motivating the teams to just do amazing things. I think by providing technology to people to start experimenting and building workflows, we'll start finding breakthroughs everywhere. And that's going to be through all the kind of really exciting stuff, so you know, drug discovery and material science, things like that. But I think actually just everyone's life just getting a little bit better because we've got extra processing power. We'll look back in 10 years time and go, oh wow, how did we ever live without this stuff? You know?